The Babysitter Killer Queen has finally hit Netflix, and fans are finding the sequel flick to be just as gory, hilarious, and flat-out bonkers as the first movie from 2017. What does it all mean? Let's break it down. But be warned, there are major spoilers ahead. Killer Queen takes place two years following the events of The Babysitter, after the fateful night when young Cole Johnson learned that his babysitter, B, was part of a demonic cult, lusting for his innocent blood so they could perform a satanic ritual. Unfortunately, things haven't been too great for Cole since that night. All of his classmates think that he's crazy, his ostensibly cool parents want to ship him off to a psychiatric high school, and his best friend Melanie, the only one who knows he's telling the truth about the blood cult, is dating a complete meathead. Even Cole's guidance counselor is quick to dismiss him and his issues. I get it, I get it, you're a weird little dude with a crush on a murderous fictitious babysitter. Fresh man is hard for everybody. To make matters worse, just as things start to look up when Melanie invites Cole out for a day of fun on the lake, it all takes a grim turn. Not only are Melanie and her friends in on the cult, but all of the cult members who Cole managed to dispatch in the first movie, Max, Sonia, Allison, and John, rejoin the party after having spent the last two years in limbo. Only the timely arrival of the cool new girl in school, Phoebe, saves Cole's skin, and the two must team up so they can survive until sunrise. The blood, guts, and laughs fly fast and furious as the babysitter, Killer Queen, barrels towards its shocking twist ending. At the film's climax, the cult captures Phoebe, and Melanie lures Cole to the secluded cove where the ritual is to take place. This involves mixing the blood of the innocent, meaning Cole's blood, with the blood of the sacrificed and chugging it down. Before they do, however, Cole's deadly babysitter, B, who has only been seen in flashbacks, makes a surprise reappearance to oversee the proceedings. Cole is shocked to see her, and even more shocked to learn that Phoebe knows B too. B was Phoebe's childhood babysitter. While driving young Phoebe to retrieve her stuffed bunny, B collided with the car Phoebe's parents were driving, resulting in a crash that killed them. After the cult members drink the blood cocktail and start disintegrating into ash, it's revealed that B had been manipulating events all along in order to sabotage the cult. She explains that she was gambling on one variable, that Cole would no longer be a virgin at the time of the ritual, which would render the blood offering impure. Fortunately, Cole and Phoebe had earlier hooked up or hiding out at Phoebe's parents' old lake house. The reason for B's reverse heel turn are twofold. First, she reveals that her initial deal with the devil wasn't to improve her own life, but to save Phoebe's after the car crash. If she could be saved, <laughs> what would you give? I would give anything. The second reason for B's about face is that when Cole told her he loved her a couple years ago, it completely changed her. Then, in order to ensure that the cult is done for good, B takes a swig of the blood offering herself, evaporating into black smoke. Cole's dad arrives just in time to get an eyeful of the freaky scene that's going down. What the f was that? Mr. Johnson is finally convinced that his son isn't crazy. Cole and Phoebe are free to embark on a relationship, the cult is defeated, and everything is wrapped up with a bow on top, right? Well, maybe not. In a sneaky mid credit scene, it's revealed that the ancient spell book those crazy cult kids use for their ritual is still laying on the beach, damaged but intact. This means that if the wrong person were to discover the book, things could get all blood culty again in a hurry. Also, there's a matter of Max's comment early on in the film. We finish this by sunrise, we have to go back down a limbo for another two years before we can try again. Let's get our cool cocktail on and finish this. This could conceivably mean that he, Allison, John, and Sonia might return again in two years. Although the first time, the ritual was screwed up by Cole killing them all, not by a tainted blood offering, which may alter or negate the two-year limbo period. The ins and outs of demonic blood sacrifices are a bit unclear. But that considered, the ending of the Babysitter Killer Queen definitely leaves a door open for the Babysitter 3. But will we get it? All signs point to maybe? In an interview with Scream Rant, actor Judah Lewis, who played Cole, shared that there were only murmurs, whispers, and ideas floating around about a sequel while shooting the first film. But now he feels that there are many different paths to go for a potential third outing. Lewis went on to say, Not only does Cole's relationship with his dad change, but his relationship with Phoebe would also be a really interesting thing to explore and see where it goes. Plus, he's got to get through high school, and I'm sure, like always, there are demons lurking just beyond the shadows that are ready to strike at any moment. Something tells us that Cole's respite from the blood-soaked carnage will be a short one, probably around two years. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about movies on Netflix are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.